Hey guys, G here. Welcome back to Luna Geckos. You know what today is? Today is bug day. It's kind of like leg day for guys that go to the gym all the time like me. What, did you want me to say something about that? <laughs> okay, so maybe I haven't been to the gym in a while, but just like leg day, if you are into the gym, you know it's necessary. Same thing with bug day. If we're going to keep all of our geckos healthy and happy, we got to feed them. And we got to feed them quality food. So today, we're going to talk about the variety of insects that we use for feeders here at Luna Geckos. We don't have time for chit chat today because we got a lot of work to do. Listen to the intro and we'll be right back Check the mic for Bug and make Day. Sure it sound right, boys. Welcome back. Quick disclaimer before we get started. You guys have all met Miss Poppy Dog and she refuses to let me film one of these videos unless she is right here. And she got a brand new bone to try to keep her busy while we film this. She's chewing away on that thing and she's hacking from time to time. So if you hear it, it's not my belly, it's Miss Poppy Dog. So we're gonna roll even with Miss Poppy Dog. I wanna show you some of the things that we use often. You've seen a bunch of this stuff before. Bounty paper towels. Always got a bunch of bounty paper towels. Bunch of egg carton, you'll see that. Calcium and vitamins, those will make sense for dusting. This is interesting. This is that cuttlefish bone stuff that uh, you typically buy for birds. We break this into pieces and put it in the bioactive vivariums because the isopods and the springtails have pretty high calcium needs. And that's a pretty inexpensive way to put calcium into the bioactives versus sprinkling in more expensive powder. We have this whole container here that is for bugs. And this is our little bug container for stuff that we use for our feeder insects and in our bioactives. This is our Pangea pig. It's our roach and cricket food. They love that stuff. Some extra leaf litter for the bioactives. This is bug food. It's our homemade recipe. It's grub pie mixed with freeze-dried shrimp. And we like to throw some of this, oh, it's got a sticker on it. Some of this springtail food in there. And we mix that all up and we sprinkle that into our bioactives for our isopods and our springtails. And occasionally we'll use it for our crickets and our dubia roaches. I don't have a garbage. Water. These are just simple water crystals. You've seen these. These are the dry ones. We take about a teaspoon, a little plastic teaspoon of these. We put it in one of these, fill it up with water, and it's amazing how far a little bit of those will go and it creates all of these water crystals that we can then use for our feeder insects. And this is our little brush we showed you in how to incubate gecko eggs Luna style. We also use this for some of our bug duties. You'll see it in a little bit. And then these are just some plastic Ziploc containers. These I believe are the square small and we use these for breeding crickets. We'll show you that too. And finally, our six quart Starlight tubs that we showed you in how to build a baby gecko house. We use them for a lot more than just housing baby geckos. We've used them as a strainer, which we showed you a couple videos ago in the how to build a bioactive vivarium. So these are versatile, use them a lot. We're gonna break today down into different insects and we're gonna hit them a chapter at a time. And I think we're gonna start with what everybody likes to start with first when they're eating. 
dessert. We're gonna start with hornworms. All right, let's start with the best part of a meal, dessert. And you know what? It's not really my kind of dessert. I'm Italian. I eat my salad for dessert, which a lot of people think is weird. I think it's normal. But for geckos, I'm gonna talk about hornworms or tomato worms. Now we're not gonna cover the nutritional value of each of these feeders that we go over today. This guy's getting away. Because there are tons of videos about the nutritional value of feeder insects, and it's pretty easy to Google, so you can look it up. I'll just give you some cliff notes of each of the feeders and why we feed them the way we feed them. Look at this guy, he's saying hi. So hornworms, it's more of a treat feeder than an everyday feeder. You can't use these as your primary feeder insect. The nutritional value is just not there. They're pretty high in fat and they have a lot of liquid content to them. I really like these for breeder females after the breeding season and periodically during breeding season just to make sure we can help keep their weight up and after breeding season make sure we can get their weight back up and keep them nice and hydrated. These are very soft, really easy to chew, don't really have a hard skeleton at all, and oftentimes you'll see videos where a gecko is eating a pretty big one of these. Don't worry about it. These are pretty easy to eat. It's mostly liquid and it's just squishy. Let's feed one. No, no not to me. Let's feed one to a gecko. All right, you guys remember Mandy, AKA Sloan from our Meet the Girls video? She loves hornworms. All right, next up, flightless fruit flies. Not a big fan of these. Not because they're not a great feeder insect. It's just they're so hard to deal with. They're so tiny, this doesn't do you any good. And the second I open this lid, they seem to kind of get everywhere. Even though they can't fly, there's just an awful lot of them in here. Now they're super easy to care for. You just buy this culture from Josh's Frogs, and this thing will last for months. And it just seems like it keeps producing fruit flies. What we like to use these for are our baby Eurodactylodes, because a baby Euro is so small. They can eat freshly hatched pinhead crickets. That's about it. These seem to work a little bit better and they seem to like them a lot better. I'll show you a baby Euro right now. So there's a little baby Eurodactylodes right there. There are two in here. Eurodactylodes velardes, clutch mates. Oh, I see both. There's the other one right down there and there's one right here. See him? how little he is compared to my finger. I hope he doesn't bite me. I have to go to the hospital. All right, here goes. I told you. The little suckers get everywhere. Can't fly. All right, next up is dubia roaches. And if you're in Canada, I'm sorry, you're not allowed to have dubia roaches. But since we came back to the United States, first thing I did was set up a couple breeding colonies of dubia roaches, because I'm telling you, it's one of our favorite foods and it's one of the easiest to propagate. The problem with propagation is you gotta eventually sort them. Cause you don't wanna feed off the big giant adults because you need them to create new babies. You don't wanna feed off the tiny babies. So you gotta figure out how can you sort all these different sizes. We just picked these up on Amazon. They're metal sifters. I think they're for pan and gold. And if you're in the gecko business, dubia roaches are as good as gold. 
It comes in a set of five. There's a link down in our description to Luna Gecko's Amazon storefront. And we have a four bugs list. So you'll be able to see this and all the other stuff we showed you at the beginning that we use for our bugs. All different sizes, so they sort different size dubia as you work your way down. You can actually use them for mealworms and probably other insects too. And then you just grab a little five gallon bucket. This is like a $5 bucket from Home Depot. They fit perfectly. So you remember back in our room tour video that we showed you that we converted an old Reptile Basics arboreal rack into our housing for our dubia roaches and our crickets. This is a typical setup for our dubias. Bunch of egg crates, bunch of dubia. You can see, oh look, a big male there. Bunch of females, tiny, oh, that's actually a buffalo beetle. They're in here for our cleanup crew. But you have all different sizes in here. You got babies, sub-adults, full-grown mature adults. And then the other stuff that we have in here is we, we use these lids off of a just a regular container. We like to keep our pig in here, our pig powder, which is our roach and our cricket food. We mix in some carrots around the edge. We like to use spinach or kale. And then you always have to make sure they're hydrated. So we'll periodically reload these water crystals and they'll last for about a month and then eventually you have to dump them out and you have to put fresh ones in. But those will be good for now. So you have Dubia and I tell you, we've had the best success with our colonies now keeping them in a rack that has heat tape and we can maintain the temperature of both the Dubia and the crickets between 85 and 90 degrees it seems to really increase that breeding. But great colony, all different sizes in there. Got to sort them. Got to do what you got to do. So we just take out an egg crate at a time. And get the doobie off. And you got babies, you have adults, you have sub-adults. You got all different sizes in here. You even have some buffalo beetles mixed in. So we didn't sort out all the egg crates because I just wanted to show you a quick example of how we do this. Important, we have two colonies going right now and you have to be careful not to always harvest from one colony because eventually your adults are gonna die and you're gonna feed off all your babies and your colony's gone. So we rotate between our two colonies and we're very careful to make sure that we don't deplete our colony because we need them to keep producing babies so we can keep having feeders. This is just a small batch to show you how we sort them. So these sifters come in all different sizes and we've done this once or twice before. You can see they're nice and clean and shiny still. We found that the biggest one isn't very useful. Even the largest dubia get through this. So we don't use that one. We use the next size as our top layer, the third size, and the fourth size. So we don't use the biggest or the smallest. This little fine mesh isn't really doing a whole lot. So we just use these three. We put them in our bucket. We take our dubia and we dump them in. And then once we get them in there, you just keep doing a little jiggling. Or you could just wait and let them work their way down. We break them apart one at a time. The biggest ones are out. Remember I told you about the brush? It helps dust them off. Some little ones will hang out on the bottom they get to live another day. Because remember, you don't want to deplete your entire dubia colony. See that? Those are the little ones we want. And here's the third one. The only thing that made it down to the third one 
a couple beetles, part of our cleanup crew. So we'll pitch them back in with these guys. And take a look in the bucket. Roach poop, no roaches. So that first batch, the bigger ones that didn't make it through, we're gonna go ahead and dump them back into the colony and let them do what they need to do. And then I'll show you what we do with the babies. So what we're left with are the little ones that we need for baby fat tails and baby leopard geckos. And one of our six quart sterlites and they're small. So I need my glasses and my brush. And we're just gonna put them in the sterlite with our little soft makeup brush so we don't have to touch them. You wanna see if the camera lady will touch one? No. Hmm. Maybe next time. So we're gonna feed a baby fat tail. Actually, two baby fat tails, clutch mates. So we take a, a few of these small dubia, dust them into the food dish, Take a little bit of calcium powder, a little bit of vitamin powder, give them a little swirl. Then we take the leftovers and we put them in one of our six quarters that we're keeping baby Dubia in. That way they're already sorted and ready to go. We don't have to go through sorting every day. We always have some ready to go. And if they get too big, we'll throw them back in the colony and let them breed. Let's see baby fat tails. So here's a couple baby patternless Oreo fat tails. I just hatched a couple days ago. Look at those fellas. Temperature sex male. You can see some pinhead crickets in there. So we just take our dubia and we put them in here. All right. You ready? It's everybody's least favorite insect. It's cricket time, baby. I know there's a lot of you that hate crickets because they jump and they get out, but you gotta have crickets. And we go through a lot of crickets, especially with the fat tails and the new cows, and even leopard geckos. You know, every season, one or two out of maybe a hundred leopard geckos are picky, and they won't eat anything but crickets. So, we have crickets, and I'm gonna show them to you. So this is our typical cricket setup. We like to use, a lot of people complain about the smell. We put about an inch, inch and a half layer of vermiculite on the bottom, and it really helps with the waste product coming from the crickets. Obviously, a bunch of egg crates. There are about 2,000 three quarter to one inch Texas banded crickets in here, and they are hungry. So you can see they went through all their pig we like to keep pig in here. We feed it dry. And then we like to give them some carrots. And they love spinach. It's usually the first thing gone is the spinach. We feed them a lot of kale too because everybody knows that kale is not for human consumption only for feeder insect consumption. And crickets are water hogs, so you gotta make sure you keep their water crystals nice and hydrated. Water crystals are nice because the crickets can get out and they won't drown. Crickets aren't the smartest. Oh, these aren't for me. So our experience with crickets has been a love-hate relationship. And we've settled in recently on these Texas banded crickets. 
that we get from Josh's Frogs. And we used to do a bunch of different sizes from Josh's Frogs. We've settled in on the three quarter inch. When we get them in at three quarter inch, they're not quite ready to breed yet, but they seem to live a lot longer and they're much more robust than the one inchers. So when we get those full adult size crickets, seems like our die off is pretty plentiful. These three quarters, they're ready to feed right now to our adult geckos. And within a week or two, they're ready to start breeding and laying eggs. And an adult cricket, every couple days can lay 50 to 100 eggs. With 2,000 crickets in one of these bins, we can get a lot of baby crickets. Here's how we do it. And I gotta tell you, we've hatched hundreds of geckos here at Luna Geckos. And the first time that we actually hatched crickets, I was so proud because I can't tell you how many times we've failed at hatching crickets. The key to the success has been that we now keep the adults in a temperature regulated rack. So they stay between 85 and 90 degrees. And we incubate the babies in our male incubator at 90 degrees. We take one of these simple Ziplocs. These are the small square. We fill it with the same substrate that we use in our lay boxes, which is a combination of eco earth and tropical soil with a little bit of vermiculite sprinkled in to help with the humidity. Aha, I didn't say moist or moisture. So we keep it really damp. I'll pour a bunch of water in here. And eco earth in general, you've seen it, isn't great initially at absorbent water. It kind of clumps up. We don't want to get it so full with water that the crickets will drown. So I'll put the lid back on. I'll put the lid all the way on and I'll shake it up real good. And we're going to want to make sure that that stays really damp, but not sopping wet. I'm going to spray a little bit on top of it. Okay, so it's nice and damp in there now. It's going to take a couple hours probably for it to soak all the way through. I'll clean up my mess so I don't get in trouble. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're just going to sit it in there. And guess what's going to happen? These 2,000 crickets, hopefully it's 1,000 males and 1,000 females or more females and males. That'd be even better. They're going to start dropping eggs in this substrate. We're going to leave this in there for about 10 days, maybe two weeks, depending on how old the crickets are. These crickets, I got them about two weeks ago and they were three quarter inches. So they're probably closer to an inch now and ready to breed. We're going to leave this in there for about a week, 10 days, 14 on the outside. Then we're going to put the lid back on. We're going to throw it in the incubator. And then after about 10 days, we're going to have baby pinhead crickets galore. So after a couple weeks in the incubator, we take that same container out, take the lid off, put it right here in a tub. They have their water, they have their vegetables, they have their pig. And look at all these baby crickets. Now this is a bridge because they are tiny. So we build them a little bridge so they can get out of the dirt after they hatch and get over here to where they're gonna live. But look at all those baby crickets. Yum, 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 yum. And there are a couple different sizes in here. These are separated by a week or so. Look at these crickets. All right. I'm going to show you how we feed crickets here at Luna. One of the biggest problems with crickets is they get out and it's going to happen. I don't care what your system is. You're going to have an escape cricket. We like to use one of these fish bags or these big cricket bags that you get at the pet store. We keep them. We take out one of our pieces of cardboard with all these crickets on it and we gently put it in here and we shake it.
How about that? Give them a little calcium dust. A little vitamin dust. Give them a little shake and bake. And then we feed them right out of the bag. This is Asha. She, she is a very aggressive cricket eater. We've had a couple times where she's jumped up and grabbed the bag and just hung on it like a shark. Oh, look at her weight. She's laid five clutches already this season. She, she's very skinny. She should be done pretty soon. We just shake some crickets in like that. And off she will go. We got to get her fattened back up. Go eat, baby. Go eat. Not my finger. Go eat crickets. So last but not least, the staple here at Luna Geckos, and probably a lot of places, mealworms. Now we get these in 10,000 at a time in the height of breeding season, in that June, July time frame when we have the most babies. We'll probably bump that up to 15 or 20,000 but we sort them in one of our big bins because they fly everywhere when you're shaking them off of that newspaper. So once we get them all off the newspaper, out of the box, we break them into these eight ounce deli cups with holes, put the lids on them, stack them in the little mini fridge, and they're good to go. And then when we're ready for them, we pull them out a couple, three, four cups at a time, depending on how many geckos we're feeding at the moment. Then we throw them into this critter keeper, drop some carrots and some spinach or kale or whatever green we have around. And we let them sit for a couple days and gut load. Once they've gut loaded, we use our little sifter we sift them, put them in a little container. As many as we need. Sprinkle in a little vitamin, a little calcium. And we shake them. And they're ready to eat. So there you go. There's bug day at Luna Geckos. You know what? We didn't cover every insect. We just covered the ones we happen to have in-house at the moment. Silkworms, as an example, is one of our favorites. There are plenty others that you can use. You can use soldier flies. There's tons of feeder insects out there. But what we showed you today is what our primary group of feeder insects are, plus probably silkworms. We just didn't have any right now. But that's it. That's Feeder Insects Luna Style. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button, share it with your friends, give us some comments down in the comments, and above all, hit that subscribe button and ring that notify bell so you'll find out the next time we release a video. Remember, every Sunday, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, new video right here, Luna Gecko's YouTube channel. Don't forget to check out our merch, lunageckos.shop. And a lot of the stuff today that we talked about is available at our Amazon storefront. So be sure to look in the description for the link to our Amazon storefront. As always, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next Sunday and maybe a sneak peek bonus video during the week. You never know. Well, you would know if you hit the notify bell, wouldn't you? I'm G. We're Luna Geckos. That's Miss Poppy Dog. That's Handy Dandy Camera Lady. See ya. It sound right, boy.